things like that. Um, probably one of the most important things in customizing your class and knowing which works to focus on depending on your class is going to be probably the most important thing here. Um, in this day and age, gear is pretty much like a waterfall. Like it's just so much of it happening and knowing which is going to be the best one for your class is going to be uh, very important if you're looking for effectiveness. One second. I see Zosin down a, a few channels in Zebran's channel. Might be able to drag him. There he goes. Okay, good. He's here. So, Horux. Everyone, if you look at my screen here, we're going to go to inventory stat page. So, how to translate this and whatnot. What's the most important thing? So, when you guys are looking at gear, Stats. The green color font and the white font is almost irrelevant at this point in current live settings. I would not even consider these numbers. What they are is white is your base stats off of your gear. Green is the modified stats of it. Little extra points here or there are going to give you some hit points. and It's very minor. It's not important anymore. The most important thing is going to be these numbers on the right side the yellow or orange or whatever color it may be on your screen, but these numbers on the right side are by far the most important thing, with the exception of Charisma. Charisma has no function at all in this game right now. They said they want to change it so it's useful, but right now it's irrelevant stat, not important. So when you're looking at these things here, heroics, a lot of them work off of multiples of 10, or multiples of 25. Um, so without getting into the heroic mods, strength is going to, every 10 points, is going to give you one more base damage. Stamina, every 20, every point is going to give you a few more hit points depending on your class. Intelligence is for end casters, as you guys know. It'll give you a little bit more, every 25 points is one more mana regen, as well as each point gives you an additional mana. Same thing with Wisdom, and every 25 is going to give you one mana regen if you're a wiz Wisdom user and additional mana. Agility is going to be avoidance. That's pretty self-explanatory. Dexterity, as you guys know, it's stuff to do with your arms, so you're going to be swinging your weapons better, as well as having some defensive things better, such as like parry or repost. And like I said, Charisma does nothing. So this is what the stats do in its base form. And then when you're looking at Tororix, here, these are the things that matter most in the game right now as far as stats are concerned. If you mouse hover over the green color font, it's going to tell you what the next point is. So, for example, wait, Keswick, you don't hear me? Is I can hear working? you. Okay, Keswick is just sending me a tell if you look at my screen, <laughs> are you talking at all yet? God damn it. I'm recording it, so it's <laughs> okay. Anyway, so if you mouse hover over the thing, it's going to show you your next point, which is, let's say here, if I wanted another point of dex um, accuracy, I need 1622 dexterity. So I'm at 1619, means I need three more heroics to reach that marker. Avoidance, same thing, agility, you need for that. Combat effects is your proc rates, that's dexterity. Damage shield and so forth, you guys get the idea here. So going more specific towards tanks, one thing the common consensus is, is stamina, agility, and dexterity are going to be your main stats uh, when tanking or whatnot. Advantages to everything here, you know, based off the rogue mods. Now, this is where people need to consider. I'm not going to say there's one right way or one wrong way. As long as you do some sort of combination of these three stats, you're going to be in decent shape as long as you don't aug stupid like, oh, let me get that intelligent aug because it has two more AC. No. As long as your augs and your stats always focus on either stamina, agility, dexterity, you're going to be in decent shape. Depending on your focus of the game, you're going to want to like min-max it. So you'll see like, oh, 
avoidances at 1620. So if I shuffle some odds around, I can get eight more points of agility, giving me that 1.000001 more chance of avoiding a hit or something like that. It's a lot of work if you want to do that. Uh, me personally, I do not do that, but there are people that do. So again, I'm not going to say one way is right more than the other, but as long as you have this general focus of what does what and how your gameplay is. What's better for raids or what's better for groups? So one thing to keep in mind is strike through. This is a very important thing here to consider. The same heroic mods we have, monsters have the same thing. So this is why if you go into like older expansions, you're going to hit a mob every freaking time, and it's going to be close to max uh, damage. All right? And as you go up in expansions, you'll notice you're hitting a little less often and not as max. Hello? Lost yeah. Did Stats, you stop? Yeah. Did I? Is that better? Oh, you cut out for like 10 seconds, but yeah, I can hear you now. 10 seconds, god damn it. Okay. That might be my kid's background, so one second. Anyway, so go on, let me start over then. So one thing to consider here, um, what's best for group or raid content? So biggest thing here is looking at these heroic mobs uh heroic mods is that the monsters have the same exact focuses as we do and one of the things is is if you notice when you go to older expansions you're able to hit monsters almost every time you're not missing you're hitting for max damage and all that stuff and as you're progressing into higher expansions you'll notice you're going to not hit as often and not hit at max as often as well it's because these stats increase as expansions increase um just like it does for us cut out again am i cutting out again are you right now but was i cutting out now before yeah cut out for like 10 seconds again Captain, seriously? What's going on here? I hear a uh, buzz sound. Um, yeah, it sounds like you get attacked by a bee, and then you die. Okay, so when's, what's the last thing I said? Talking about how mobs have uh, the same stats we do. and Okay, so mobs have the same stats as we do. Raid mobs have slightly higher. So let's just artificially make numbers up. Let's say in group content, every but everything has like 15 or 20. Raid mobs would have higher than that. So let's say 30. So what this basically means is with monsters having higher strike through in raids, our defensive stuff such as avoidances and parries and reposts are not going to work as effective in raid mobs compared to group mobs. So the common th agreement for tanks is if you do group content more, you're going to want to focus on agility and dex, right? Because those are going to work more. If you do raid content more, you're going to want to focus on stamina. Reason why is stamina, obviously one, gives you more hit points, but also it gives you melee shielding, which no heroic mod can mod like adjust. This is base incoming damage, so that's, you know, uh, mitigation is done on your end, not the mob's end. So you're going to smooth out your damage spike, your curve, and have a little bit more, give a little bit more time for your healers to heal you. You know, if you look, um, as far as hit points are concerned, I have a decent amount uh, because I went 100% stamina. Um, I feel with regular raid gear and such, with some Logs. I'm at okay range in agility index. Dropton has higher agility index, and his AC is higher than mine. But then he spikes more than I do, as far as numbers are concerned. But the one thing that I will say is the ultimate equalizer is 
how reactive you are. Like, how often do you push buttons? You know, it doesn't matter how, what your stats are. If you hit your buttons and you do mitigation, you, you're going to be better off. So what I'm getting at in short is stats are great. Skill is more important. Just keep that in mind. If you don't hit buttons, no matter what gear you're wearing, you're going to die. So that's basically it in a nutshell for heroics, what to consider when choosing it. As long as talking for tanks specifically, warriors, stamina, agility, dex, doing your best to round that out, that's the best thing. One quick observation in Goop, I'm going to use your example. You're just returning to the game. What would I do for gear and such in your instance? First thing is replace any old raid gear with group gear. If you're looking at the group gear, this current content, it's like 6,000 and 6,500 or something like that to that effect. That's probably going to be better than most of your gear um, that you're still wearing. So thinking like raid gear is going to help you out tremendously. Honestly, replacing your older stuff with group gear for the time being is going to help you a lot more. Raid focuses. When selecting gear, starting out fresh, what new things, regardless of your class, there's um, priority settings of what is the most important thing. Old school mentality is, I got to get the highest AC. I got to get the highest hit points. That's going to make me live longest. Um, not necessarily true. Like, like I say, regardless of the class, you're going to want to look at number one thing is focuses. What slot is going to give you a, like a unique focus? So I keep on hearing the, uh, beeping in the background. Is that me disconnecting? No, it's not you. Okay. So what slots have a unique proc or ability or unique feature? By far, the most important slot for a tank is going to be the shield. Why the shield? Shield is the only slot in the entire game, regardless of your class, that you're going to get the full benefit of the AC. You guys may or may not know, AC, depending on your class, has a, um, a cap to it, so to speak, of how effective it will be. So if you're a caster, you're going to get less out of AC, obviously, than a leather, than as a chain, than as a plate. Plate's getting the highest value out of it, but shield, regardless of any class, is going to get the best bang for the buck. So shield usually is the first thing that you get. For a warrior, the next thing that I would suggest strongly is the weapon. Why the weapon? First thing is you're going to smash things harder. Biggest thing here about the warrior-only weapon is not only does it have a anger proc to it, which is nice, and a DD proc to it, but it also has a longer delay. This is a huge thing when it comes to tanking in this day and age. Why? So you don't eat repose. When you swing, just like how we talked about you know, heroic stats, mobs will repost you as well. If you're wielding a fast weapon, you're going to be eating an extra 80k hits, extra 90k hits here and there. And that that adds up, right? So if you're wielding like a 21 delay or 25 delay weapon, that's significantly more swings that you're taking and potentially eating repose. And that's never a good thing. So that, there's that. The next slots that I consider as far as important are going to be BP. BP is very good for the extra tick of fortitude. This is a very important button that you know warriors have, giving you one extra tick, six seconds of basically invulnerability, being able to do whatever you need to do. That's very good. Mask is another important slot, just because of the aggro. This increases you by a percentage base. Anything percentage base is money. This means whatever you do, you're going to get a percentage return. If you push buttons religiously and do really well with that, you're going to find that you're going to get a greater output. Another important slot is going to be belt. Right now, they've made it generic in the sense that there are three different types of belts. There's a tank belt right, that does a cripple and a slow. Then there's a caster healer belt, 
and then there's a melee belt, melee DPS belt. It can be argued or disputed that the cripple slow belt is less of a tank belt than the melee belt. Um, either one, I think it has its advantages and disadvantages. You know, the cripple slow belt is only good if you don't group with a slower or shaman or something like that often. While as, you know, this game is based off of DPS. If you can kill the mob faster, you will win. It doesn't matter. DPS kills, it trumps every me mechanic in this game. Well, 90% of the mechanics in this game. So having the melee belt, and to the other flip side of the argument is you're going to hit the mob harder, right? You're going to do more damage and things like that. So having both belts and using it situationally may be a good thing. So that's something else to consider. And then as far as the other slots, I would fill out your visibles and then go with the charm and then whatever else. And as we know, the best AC earring is going to be the Mubis of last expansion. And then, you know, having the uh, good ear, the quest ear is the other thing. So that's what I would say for that. Um, Goob, one thing when I saw your gear before, you're missing a lot of Type 5 augs. Type 5 augs is basically half the stats, if not more, yeah, you know, half the stats of your current gear. So, like, this is current Type 5 stuff, right? And that's pretty much will double the stats of any, well, most raid pieces at this point. Um, obviously, it's a little hard for you right now if you can't tank current stuff to get the current Type 5s, but. Older expansions, um, some of the ones that I mentioned before, they do drop Type Fives, and they do rot in TBL if Maratus, which is something that you should be able to do with one other person. Um, so filling out those Type Five slots is basically going to double your stats of, you know, everything pretty much because all the gear at this point has Type Five stuff. So certainly that's something that you should uh, look into as a fast upgrade. Um, doubling your stats would be tremendous for your tanking. So that's that. Okay, so we already invested 20 minutes into this conversation, just going over your gear and heroics. So let's go over the juicy stuff, hot keys and such. So what do I do? Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I said I was going to do uh, tributes and trophies. So let's do that real quickly. Tributes and trophies. Very important. If you're part of this guild, you're going to want to make sure that you go to uh, Guild Tribute and this button over here, Opted In. You want to make sure you opt in to stuff. If you're not opted in, when we raid, you do not get these two bonuses here, which is like AC and mana reduction and uh, some stat stuff. Keswick, I thought there was a twin cast thingy here. Did someone take that up? Or melee attack thing? It should be there. I only see two things. Oh, wait. Yeah, no, I only see two things. Or... You can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, let me look real quick. Because I only see AC, mana pres, and stats. You're looking on the guild only. You got to go to guild trophy. Oh, it's a trophy. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. So that's the guild tribute, not guild trophy. And then the guild trophy stuff is all this good stuff here that you guys need to make sure you opt in for as well. So make sure you guys do that. So per personal stuff, what do I use? Some of you may have enough trophy slots to unlock. Some of you may not. How do you unlock trophy slots? It's simply by doing um, collects throughout the expansions. So what I will say is best for all classes, regardless. Um, who's chiming in? Someone's eating. That's Kezik eating. God damn you, Kezik. Okay. It sounds delicious. So Lost Wayfarer's Tent. This is 12 to all heroics, 3,000 hit point mana. This is from Anniversary Stuff. Mortal, Ethereal Wonder, 50 to all. Uh, what expansion is that from? 
you, well, you guys could look it up. And then Ralos um, Axe, that's from another expansion. Repuga Kinos, these, that's another expansion one. Scavenger is another expansion one. Duality is another expansion one. And you see these are all adds for stats to it. Trophy of Landing. So this one is one that tanks um, that I've talked to use different ones. Um, I like this one because I'm a stamina tank. There's other ones that do other things. So this is the only one that I would say question mark, depending on your play style or the heroics that you select. And then Seaf um, Seafarer 1, which is 5 to all heroics, 400 points, is, but high AC. So just to give you an example, if you look at my raw numbers right now, without touching anything, if I turn on my tributes, I gain like something like 400 something and boost up the, the, this and what was that? Over 10,000 hit points or something, 20,000, whatever it is. It's significant. And then when I turn on guild stuff, it goes up a bit more. So certainly don't discount the, tri the tributes and trophies. Um, very important. So as far as personal tributes are concerned, these are the ones I choose. Again, if this is something that you would want to customize, but certainly, again, focus on the ones that you feel are important to your class. Body of Hero is Heroic Stamina. Bulwark of Honor is AC. Dance of Hero is Agility. Hero's um, Dexterity. Second Chance. This is one, again, that is... Oh, it could go to rank three now. Anyway, this is one that, again, is debated a bit among tanks. Is this one better or worse? Because it's a relatively small chance, and could you be using a stat thing over this? Possibly, yes. Um, I like it. Has it fired much for me? I really can't say it has. Um, but it makes me feel like it might work one day. So this one it's is a question mark. 6%. Yeah, it's not high at all. So I may switch this one out. Drofton doesn't use this one, and then he uses a regular stamina one, and which adds a few hit points to it. So that one is the only one that I would say is a question mark if you were a tank. This one, you may want to use something else uh, dependent on your own opinions of it. But definitely heroic stamina. The Dex, Agility, and then AC. For sure, those are going to serve you well. Any questions on stats, trophies, heroics, or gear before I move on to the next area? Okay, silence is bliss. I will obviously take questions towards the end. So... Before I get into the hockeys and everything like that, just a mentality set that I want to just invoke, you know, different, again, there are different play styles, different mentalities. That's one of the things that makes this game great is how you play depends on your personality. If you're a more passive conservative person, you know, look for the safest route versus the ones that try and get aggro over the tank to be the top parse, but then die and get sad because the tank couldn't hold aggro. Whatever whatever personality you may be, um, there's good things and bad things to it, right? And then pretty safe thing. For me, my personal opinion is regardless if I'm DPSing as a you know tank or wizard or whatnot, or if I'm tanking, you know, how much aggro do I throw out? I feel in most cases it's better to push your buttons and do the max capacity of your class as long as it's not detrimental to the event's mechanics. You know, a good example would be the Kale group mission. You don't want to burn the boss because that would be kind of bad. But on the same token, burning the ads would not be a bad thing, right? Things like that. It's mentality, like, but you, for me personally, is push buttons as often as you can saving buttons for a situation most of the time um not to be mean but the 
average person is not going to be able to react in time for those buttons to be useful. And a lot of times those buttons would just sit there idle and not really get used. So we all understand the concept of DPS. You push a lot of buttons, they help each other. You get a multiple factor out of it. Pushing more than two or three, you're going to find a better result than pushing one button at a time. Right? That's just a common agreement. The same will go for aggro. There's some aggro stuff that will feed off of each other and help you gain more aggro if you push them in succession rather than pushing them one at a time situationally. Um, so this is my theory on tanking is always throw out as much aggro as you can. Um, and even in the worst case scenario, if you die, the next tank up should at least have a higher aggro value feeding off of what you've done in your work. In theory, that's how it should work. And if you find in those situations that you're out aggroing other tanks, well, I don't believe in the theory of you should play worse so that other people feel better about themselves. I think raising the bar is an important factor. So doing the best you can and encouraging others to do equally, if not better, is the better mentality than oh, that guy can't hold aggro, so I'm not going to push as much button so I don't steal aggro. It doesn't work that way. It's um, it's not fundamentally good for the raid if people are holding back because some others are not able to keep up. It's not the best um, choices to make. So one of the things with that mentality is how do I push buttons fast enough to be useful? And that's going to go with something that um, is called a spam key. One button that you press that will do um, consecutive things without uh, having to think too much. So if you look at this bar here, the upper left one, this is my spam key. This is what I continuously press one button to hit all these buttons in succession so that whenever I'm fighting or something, my critical buttons that will... Um, I will keep on hitting them repeatedly without having to think about it. So for example, look at this dummy here. This is my spam key. This is hot bar 10. And I set it to my uh, mouse auxiliary button, which is button one. So if you guys watch, Just by spamming that button, it went across the entire thing and spammed all these delicious buttons in succession from left to right and continues to do so as I'm tanking. So it's throwing out aggro as quick as it can refresh. And I think June can attest that um, my aggro is pretty decent, comparatively speaking to others. So what are the buttons that I use? It's a priority system. Remember, as you use the spam key, it goes from left to right. For me, the most important button is courageous defense. Why this button? Biggest thing is here is if you look at the duration versus the reuse time, the reuse time is only 12 seconds but the duration is a minute and 12, which means I could pretty much have this button running the entire time, which basically means I could always have some sort of defensive up no matter what. If this combat ability box is ever empty, you're not doing the class correctly. It should always have something running. Just as simple as you see it there. It should always have something there. A tank without defensive running is not a tank, to put it simply. Next button, Shield Sunder. This is very important because it triggers our synergy. Shield Sunder refreshes every 15 seconds, so 
the button gets hit quite often. Every 15 seconds, if your max synergy is going to grant your entire group a rune, which basically absorbs 12,000 points of damage from six direct damage spells or melee hits. So it's a guaranteed rune. If you have a group of three warriors in the group and they're all doing their synergy, you know, it's not tremendous, but it's free. So why wouldn't you use it every 15 seconds? It's absolutely wonderful. So that's why that's a button two. Button three, Imperial's Command. This is, again, very important button. I would not put them in the spam bar early up front if it wasn't. And if you read the description here, anytime you need a description, it is right-click um, the button, and then it'll pop up the AA window. Imperial's Command, when com uh, commanded, blah, 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 reduces spell cast. Uh, mana cost triggers magical bus. You get more melee stuff, more hit points, more attack speed, more AC, more mana regen, more endurance regen. It's solid. Again, there's no reason not to ever use this button every time that you can. The fourth button, by far, by far, not even remotely close, the most important aggro button in this entire game, in my opinion. There are two buttons here that you will interchange. One is called Concordant Expanse versus Concordant Precision. What do they do? Concordant uh, Precision. Basically, when you have this on, anything that you target, when you um, get a healed, single target direct heal on you, you're going to generate aggro value on whatever you're targeting. Expanse is slightly different. How much hate? Can you um, click the... No. Eh. It's a lot. Because it's machine gun. It's, it's significant. Um, anyway, um, Expanse is slightly different. Anything that you have aggro on, not to be confused that with anything that's on the extended target, but anything that has a little numeric value to it, to the left. Every time you get healed, you're going to generate aggro on all those targets. So that's a very good thing. What should be done in most cases, if you're in raid, you're going to switch to precision. When you're in group combat, you're going to switch to expanse. That's generally what you just need to do, dependent on the event. If you're in the raid event that you're tanking trash, then you're going to want like multiple trash, easy trash, then you're going to want to run expanse. If you're in a raid single targeting stuff, then you're going to want to do precision. So swap out whatever you need. What could be more important? The next button is attack on. I can't tell you how, before I made this hotkey, the value of having an attack on. Not to be confused with the on, attack on and off button from the menu, because if you're spamming on, off, on, off, that's retarded. You're like attacking sometimes and not attacking and other times. Slash attack on. Very important. Now, the one thing here that's, I would say, equally as important, especially when you're tanking, is having a window filtered melee with melee warnings. This is super, super important, regardless of what class you play. Why? Why? So if you notice, all my chats have timestamps to it. All right. So if you right click and timestamps, this is how you do it. You could add them there. Why is melee warnings important? So you see right now, if I'm far away from the mob and I turn attack on, you're too far, you're too far, you're too far. That's DPS and aggro lost. You have to know if you're hitting the mob or not. It will stop spamming when you're close. This is one of the biggest reasons why I tell people to use overhead, you know, or just not first person, because uh, so much DPS is lost. Think about it this way if you're burning and you're doing two mil. DPS, but you're standing away, not hitting it for two seconds, what do you think your DPS is going to be? Right? 
It's as simple as that. No matter how much gear you have, no matter how much AA you have, if you hit your buttons and you're not standing next to the mob, it don't mean anything. So having a window to tell you, hey, asshole, move in, is a good thing. Very important window. Whether it be for holding aggro or DPSing or anything, knowing if you're going to be effective or not to the mob, very important. So everyone should have some sort of chat window to tell them if they're in range or not. So that's that. So the next... Oh, you cut out for a second. Beasting. Did I cut out again? Yeah, yeah, you cut out. You said, okay, next thing, and then you cut out. God damn it. Sorry. Time, maybe time for a headset. So anyway, next thing. The aggro buttons. Aggravate, roar, and oppressing shout. These are all aggro buttons. You know, other tanks I spoke with feel, you know, they're situational. You should wait. For me personally, is use them while you got them. Um, some of them refresh pretty quickly. And... Um, you would save lives by having high aggro, right? Because our job as tanks is to hold aggro, as well as survive, obviously. But if you're not, you can't hold aggro, don't mean shit. So I use everything off the bat. This next button, debatable. This is one that I would question mark if you want to use it or not. It has certainly gotten me into trouble. So when I was talking to Jekyll the other day, we noticed, he noticed one thing is... Your target must be under 20%. I could guarantee you, though, that I have used it, and it has damaged the mob at 100%. Right? At least it fired just the way it did. I can't say for certain, but I've had mobs summon me because I pulled with it. Uh, I definitely damaged it one, somehow, one way or another. So I like it because it's kind of a quick button and it works but in the same token it's gotten me in trouble so that one i would leave as a question mark dependent on your own personal preference the next button is your charm i can't tell you how many times i forget to click your mantra as a tank like it just doesn't dawn on me that it's an important button it does stuff it's free so why wouldn't you use it so i've added it to the spam bar Warlord's Fury is another aggro thing. So this is where I was talking about before is things work better in combination. So this is one of those uh, increases your hatred you generate for all actions by 80%. Right, so this is another biggie, right? So the more things you do, you're going to get a percentage base bonus out of it. So it's a good one. should be used as often as possible. Again, kind of a pretty quick refresh time, 90 seconds, so not a horrible thing. Last button is relax. That doesn't get triggered because of the requirements, um, so you, you manually click that. That's that. So that's my spam bar and the reasons why I do what I do with that. Now, going back to the courageous thing, this is a very important aspect of my hotkeys. Um, generally speaking, if you're using hotkeys and without proper hot, I'm sorry, if you're using combat abilities without proper hot buttons, let's say you're running courageous and you're like, oh crap, there's a lot of mobs coming out. I'm going to need to use armor. What you would need to do is. with your mouse click this off because there's that and then click that all right so it's kind of mouse motions and such if you want to switch combat abilities it's a little bit of a hassle however you can make a hot key so we'll use armor as an example if you make a hot key slash stop disk that actually stops the disk that you're running you do need a five um half a second pause because of some server lag and then slash disk armor of relent. You don't need to type out the entire thing. And then a timer 6,000. So why a timer 6,000? 
Well, simply put, it's the reuse time. 10 minutes times 60 seconds is 600. And then add a zero because timer is done in milliseconds. So when you push the button, fades out. And this background is going to refresh in 10 minutes, just like that. And then I do this for basically all the disks because Courageous is always going to be running as my base, no matter what. So any other disk is going to have the same hot button. So Ultimate is going to have the same thing. The timer is 63 because that's 10 minutes and 30 seconds or whatever it is. So that's that. Then my offensive buttons, my fort, all the same thing like that. So that I could always use my base and switch to a higher disk as needed without having mouse clicking one off and then using the other. Any questions on that? What was the one you were showing me that was it, it, it like hit flash and then went to uh, yeah. Fortitude timed out? Oh, there's a couple of them there. I like so. That. This is my flash key. So, as you guys know, for Warrior Flash, you need to have a one handed weapon up. I can't tell you how many times when I first started playing the Warrior, I had my two handed up, I hit flash, and was like, hey, I died. What the hell? What's going on here? So, you always need a one-handed up, regardless. It could be dual-wield or one-handed. So I made a hotkey here, which is simply put bandolier activate, and then whatever your bandolier name is. So mine is called one-handed, and it switches to one-handed first, and then does flash, and then 900 is the uh, timer for it. So Dizzy, the one thing that I told you before is if you wanted to... Um, add um, four to it, you would do something like this. Um, you would delete timer here. You would delete that. You And then you would just add the this to it. Stop disk and then um, disk four. You would just add these three lines to the next part. Gotcha. But this flash key is very important. Um, because you don't want to think, oh man, I got to bend the leer first before I flip flash. You can want to, the purpose of hotkeys is you want to try and automate as much as possible so that you don't have to react. It's just doing it, just getting it done. Yeah, so, let me ask a quick question while you got this screen up. Uh, yep. I'm a group warrior, but I would like to rate at some point. Uh, Say you're tanking the mob and every damn buddy in the raid is going to, you know, jump on it. Uh, what do you do other than hit your uh, spam bar? Ha, excellent question. So this is what I do. Again, I'm not going to vouch to say that this is the best way. But again, I think June using June as a model, um, he never aggros me. Like, unless he switches and I'm not on the target. What do I do? Uh, obviously, I hit the spam bar. I hit flash, which is very important. But flash, dual wield, and then Rallos Rage. And then why that? So if you were to look at my dual wields, they're both the warrior only weapons, so they have the spike of anger. June, what did we say it was? It's like 46,000? 45,000? 40, 40, yeah, something like that. Let, let's just say 40,000. It's uh, aggro per proc. So I'm dual wielding. So it's 80k proc. You know, well, I'm sorry, 40k per swing dual wielding. And Rallos Rage is kind of like the Ranger buff, where every swing you do is going to proc. So this ability, when activated, grants 100% chance of your weapons um, magically affects for 12 seconds. So I'm getting 12 seconds of dual wielding, 100% proc rate with the Warrior's Fury, which is like 80% addition to that, plus all the other craft that I'm doing. In addition to that as well, I am doing the two illusions, which is Phantasmal Aggression and Projection of Fury. Projection of Fury is a doppelganger that generates blah, 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 hey, blah, 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 every five seconds. That's, you know, again, this is multiplied as well. 
uh, with the Warlord's Fury, and then the Projection of Fury. Did I disconnect again? No, he's no. good. Okay. Where the hell is it? Oh, Phantom Aggressor, sorry. Phantom Aggressor, the, the, the Israeli desertion of you will attack and add hatred to you over time. So again, that's an additional aggro button. So does that answer your question, Dizzy? Yeah, and I got one other question that will I'll be good then. On my spam bar, for some reason, everything's the same as what you said, except I have gut punch on it as the very last one instead of relax. Not does, sure why. It doesn't fire. I tried to get gut punch and knee strike on the spam key, and for whatever reason, I can't seem to get it to work. Okay. But th does it work on yours? I, I'd have to watch next time I'm using it. Mine for sure did not. Yeah, see? It doesn't work. For whatever reason. Yeah, I don't know why that button doesn't work. But those are other buttons that you should use often. Gut Punch and Knee Strike, because they're um, debuffs on the boss or whatever your target is. Yeah, I have noticed this. It's not pushed <clears throat> in a lot. It's probably never pushed in, so I'll take it out. So that's that. So here's the part that I will say I do not know the correct answer, but Warriors have a boatload, a boatload of discs to use as far as um, mitigating damage. You know, Descend Shield, uh, Finish the Fight, Rampart, Tenacity, Spire, your BP, Blade Guardian, Sun Glory, Brace for Impact, Warriors Bravery, etc., etc. All these buttons. There is a specific order to maximize the use i don't know it um that's something that i've been meaning to try and look into but having the buttons there is one thing but knowing how to use them correctly and that's one thing that i do need to learn so i'm not going to say this is the order um go with what you guys use experiment down or find someone smarter that knows it but certainly these buttons here should be available but which order I can't tell you. Maybe Drofton knows better than I in that regards. My aggro buttons that I feel should not be spammed. First thing is, unending attention and Aegis and Nemity should never, 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 ever, ever, ever be spammed. These are the retard buttons. What do I mean by that? When you push it, you're going to generate aggro on your target, but it's temporary. If you're not spamming other crap, you're going to lose the aggro in like six seconds. You'll notice when you hit this button, your aggro is going to spike up to over 100, you know, 500, 600, 700, 800. That doesn't mean you're keeping it by no means. You have to push other buttons. Otherwise, it's not going to stick and the mob is going to ping pong and it's going to screw your healer up. They're not going to know who to heal. So these buttons should only be used when following up with other stuff. Never use these unless you're ready to throw additional aggro on it because whatever you attention you have to it, it's temporary. It only temporarily places you on top. Just keep that in mind. It, it gives you an opportunity to take aggro. It's not a guarantee thing. Um, you will lose it if you don't push additional buttons. Taunt, as you guys know, is uh, one additional point only above your, the highest aggro of the person. So, Goob, I'm going to use an example here that I saw you do when we're grouping together. When we had mobs incoming, you actually area taunted. This is um, not effective because basically on fresh incoming kills, the mobs, the aggro is very low. Right? And you're basically only putting yourself one point higher than anybody else. And if most people are at, uh, let's just say, under 100, you're not giving that area taunt button much room to work with. Area taunt should only be used, again, if you're ready to follow through with additional aggro buttons, especially with area taunt. Uh, area taunt, if you don't have something like expanse running, you're going to lose aggro really quickly to other classes like Shadow Knights that are spamming AE aggro because you're only putting yourself one point higher. And Shadow Knight aggro is you know thousands of points per cast so 
Mm. Keep that in mind. Area taunt is only one point higher. It's not a high value thing. It should not be used as a spam button at all. And only use it if you're. Shit. Cut out. Let's. Did I cut out again? Yes, you did, and you're back now. Okay. So what was the last thing you heard? Only use it if. <laughs> okay. So, blast of anger is a very important button for me. I only use it in situations. So I'm going to use June as an example. Let's say I'm tanking a mob, and I have a um, hundred thousand aggro points. Just making up a number, right? And June is up there. He let's say he's at seventy thousand aggro. Right, I die. June takes aggro, so he's the next highest value at seventy thousand. I get rezzed. I go, oh crap. Okay, I get some of my buttons down. Well, what do I do? So I have blast of anger ready. When you look at it, blast of anger does fifty thousand aggro points. If I hit that button, great. Now I get fifty thousand instant aggro, but. June is set 70. It's not going to help me to, you know, save him. So what I do is I make a hotkey, do ability, one, which is my taunt key. Will taunt work all the time? Hell no. No, it won't. But why not use it? So let's say in the worst case scenario, taunt fails. I'll be 28,000 aggro shy of him. If he can survive, you know, a few more seconds, great, I'll take it over. But if taunt does work, taunt is going to put one one point higher than him. So it's going to put me at 70,001 aggro. And then Blast of Anger is going to do an additional 50,000. So I'll be at 120,001 aggro by pushing one button. Not I love that thing. example. That's a good example. I feel like a lot of people don't realize how like the hatred works in numbers like that. Yeah, and it's again, I'm trying to use simple numbers, but that's the idea. Using buttons by themselves, not great. Combination, you're going to find it does a lot better. So something like this, when you push that button, it's because you want aggro. So definitely tie the taunt button to it. It's a wonderful thing. So that's why I do that. Next thing is offensive buttons. Again, this is something that I do. Uh, Chofton does slightly differently. He does more DPS than me, so maybe his way is better, but this works for me. I do okay. There are three different discs that I use. Fell Strike, Offensive, Brutal. Brutal is, for me, the strongest one, then Fell Strike, then Offensive is the least one. As you guys know, I have the hotkey that will swap my discs. My quick buttons are going to be Spire, Rampage, uh, Detriment, Reprisal, and Veminent. So on quick burns, I'm going to hit these things. Um, that's my quick burns. Full burns, long stuff, is Rallus Rage and Warshore's Heroic. It's really not. Cut out. God damn it, I cut out again, didn't I? Yep. Hmm. We're talking about big burns and you cut out. Okay. Sorry. So big burns. Um well I showed you the little burns, which is Spire, Rampage, Remnant Rage, and Detriment Reprisal. Big Burns is adding Rallus Rage and Warsher's Hook, and then spamming gut punch and knee strike. That's basically it. There's not much else to wor uh worry DPS. With the exception of one thing. Battle Leap. Oh my god. It makes me sad when I don't see warriors or berserkers do this. Increase your base melee damage to 45%. Again, anything percentage-based, the more you do, the better the outcome is when you get a percentage-based bonus. 
Always use Battle Elite when you just get rezzed or when you freshly zone. Always use it once um, to get this buff. Your damage is going to increase substantially, which means obviously holding aggro better, but smashing things. It's a good thing. It should always have that Battle Elite button. Certainly you don't want to spam it because your screen is going to go like that, which is not good. So there's that. These are my utility buttons. Area Taunt, for reasons I said before. Howl, which is your fade. Grapple, which is your pull in. Press to strike is push out. Furious Sleep is a wonderful button that I love using, which is basically making you bounce in a certain direction. It's your shadow step for a warrior. These are my clickies. So one important thing here for familiar. If you go to your key ring, familiar, you see I have Emperor Ganex thing, which is like the best familiar in the game. So as long as you have that in the stat box, if you click any other familiar, you're going to get the buff. So one second, we'll let this refresh. See, it just came up. And this is the Ganek buff, even though this is not it. So reason why I have this here, and there are many other ones, is because this is instant cast. So if I just got killed, and I need my familiar buff up, which you know every single class mm -hmm. should, I have an instant cast thing to get it going again right immediately. So that's a good thing. Look at your claims. There's a few fast casting, if not instant cast, um, familiar clickies. This is only if you don't have a pet out. If I have a stupid pet out on any other class, it's going to just turn it into a flying monkey. So, June, this wouldn't really apply to you since you have your water out. I'm sad. I was looking for that. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what what one you push. It just matters what's in that screen. Yes, correct. I did not know that. Nice. Especially since you said, like you said, make it an instant cast one. Yeah, but you would have your pet out. But no, but I still use would. one. I still use um, one of them. I forget which one it is. Not it, that one. As long as it's not a pet illusion. No, it's not. So there's that. And then things that do not get interrupted is the conch and then also the uh, BP from the smore. These things can be casted through if you're tanking. It won't get interrupted. There are a few items in the game that will not interrupt when you're getting hit. And these two click self buffs are one of those. And then, of course, I have my mount and then the mask in case those get dispelled for whatever reason. Diplomatic papers and then the blood drinker. So there's that. These are my bandoliers that I like to keep handy. One-handed. Two-handed blunt, two-handed slash, no damage, and dual wield. And then some of my clickies. And there, there's that. Um, and more clickies up top. That's basically in a nutshell. Uh, any questions or anything? Because ARCs is happening. Oh, one thing you told Jekyll was about the two-hander and which two-hander was best and the reason why. Oh, okay. That's fine. So... The three different two-handed weapons, as we know, piercing, slash, and blunt. What is best? They're all good in a situation. Mm -hmm. I will not say one is better than the other, but if you're tanking, easy crap, or stuff that you know you won't die, I feel personally, and again, this is something that other tanks will dispute or argue, I like the two-handed blunt more. Reason why is it has a higher base damage, so you're going to repost damage them, more. One of the biggest DPS things for tanks is repost. When a mob's hitting you, you swing back at it for free. And it doesn't take into consideration delay, it takes into consideration your base damage of your weapon. In addition to it, when you use Rampage, it does five primary swings of five swings of your primary. So the bigger damage you have in your primary, the more damage your Rampage will do. Like, so if you rampage with your one-handed, 
that's only 484 versus 711, five rounds of those. So Rampage is going to be significantly more as if you use a two-handed blunt. Piercing is great because it's fast, and if you're not tanking. And then Slash is the middle ground of the, them both. So there's that. Any other questions? Again, this is not saying you can't ask questions later, but I just want to throw out some things that I do and see if it works for you guys. Um, and it's 8.30, so it's time to rate. If there are no more questions, we're going to get going. Just one random one that has nothing to do with anything you just said. How do, how do you have three lanterns there? Okay. Moratos, um, Alishai, and... I'll show you. I'll show you. So I have the wishing lamp that's here. So I make a hotkey, right? That's one, right? And then I inspect it, and then I convert it. It changes there. I make another one. I inspect it. I have three. I tried that, and I, I did. You could only work. use you could only use the one that is active. Okay. So, Okay. So, Alishai is active right now. That's the only one I could use. So why worry about why, why do you bother making them since you have to convert it anyway? Just click the one you convert. I mean, just for random, just for whatever. Because I could just do it from the hotbar. So if I remember right, it's like, oh, I want to go Strato. So I inspect, convert, and then you don't have to find it in your bags. Yeah, you uh, okay, well, I know where mine is in my bag. I just made sure it was in one specific spot. But okay, I was thinking, God, how did you get all three of them to work? Because I couldn't do it. No, you don't. Okay, thanks. This, this, uh, thank you for all the information, by the way, and it's been very helpful. Do you, you, you recorded this, and it's going to be up, right? I hope June did. Right. Oh, so one thing also, and again, this is Goof um, talking to you also. One thing that Demar said the other day that really holds true for returning members, there's some things that he had to unlearn because what you knew before is not the case anymore. So you have to come to things with an open point of view. Um, don't hold too too fast on the things that you knew before because you know, in a 20 year old game, things change. So just keep that in mind, and you know, have a little faith in people like. Um, if they tell you something, it's probably for a good reason. That sucks. Beast Lords was a perfect example. 19 years of two-handed weapons, and this year we use one-handed. Yeah, that's a very true statement. I mean, look at the Rangers we bow. I can't stay. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. God damn it. Now how do I get rid of the freaking bar? Is it eight? No. God damn it. I didn't not pay attention. I know it sucks they don't put the number on the bars. <laughs> Thanks, see. All right, dropping out of here and getting in team speak. See you guys.